Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Sis. I'm Sis, a.k.a. Ali. I'm Dad. A.k.a. Tony. We have some super guests today. Yes. Yes, we do. We have, this is like, this is like a really big time for multiple reasons. One, we have some of our most favorite people on the planet in the room with us. They have us. seen us from the beginning. From the beginning. Big Gigantic fans. And we also have our very own producer this morning. Yeah, Brendan. So Brendan. We, we sound a little different. Brendan because... Bridwell is actually producing, which if you listen to the intro music, that is produced by Brendan Bridwell. He made that himself. That's awesome. I know it. So let's introduce let's introduce our favorite. We're a favorite Chick Fil A family that comes to Chick Fil A as much as we do. They're here <laughs> all the time. They're here all the time. Ron and Beth and the star of the show, Miss Violet. Violet. Say something. Say hi, Violet. Good morning. Say good morning. <laughs> That's like I am not getting anywhere close no. to that. Violet is sporting a really cool ladybug this morning. Say you want to say hi. This way. Say good morning. We call Violet our Chick Fil A baby. She's like, she's like leaning like so far. It's like, what is this black thing in my face? Every time we see you guys come in, it's our favorite Chick Fil A baby. I know. Well, we have seen Violet from belly not, button. Yeah. From belly button. From to belly baby. button to baby, baby to now. How long have you guys lived here in Dallas? Uh, Five years. Yeah, I moved back here earlier, but. <laughs> All right, so. You guys are in here almost every Saturday morning with us and have been watching this this adventure <laughs> take place this whole time. Are you going to jump out of that chair this morning? Yeah, she She's is. pretty fearless. She is absolutely fearless. And so you guys have been watching <laughs> us do this thing. Yeah, it's good morning. Good morning. We can hear you now. Yeah, well now we can hear you. You're going to be the star. There you. Yes. Hi. 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 <laughs> she is awesome. And so we have we have seen you guys, we have talked to you guys, and we have watched Violet literally grow from belly button to, to baby. And now she's cruising. Yeah. She is walking <laughs> and on the way to running. She is on her way to running. She has a full vocabulary. All right, so you're gonna have to tell us a little bit about you guys because the every time we stop and <laughs> <laughs> Every time we stop and talk to you guys, we learn something fascinating. <laughs> Violet Grace. I love that. Violet Grace. Well, I'll, I'll take the start of that cue. Cool. Right. So, uh, you know, I'm originally from North Texas. I grew up here and then uh, went to New York for college. Went to Cornell. Mm -hmm. And then that's actually where I met Beth. Oh. Our, our first year, it was a freshman year romance. And, um, there you, go. you know, we dated on and off and then we graduated. She always stayed in New York City, uh, working there wow. in fashion, and I kind of popped around the East Coast between law school and working and practicing. Did you go to law school in Cornell or somewhere else? No, I went to the University of Miami. Nice. Ooh, man, you went tip to tip, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Cornell down to Miami. Yeah, I just needed a break from the ice and no snow. No yeah. kidding. Well, you definitely got it, that's for sure. Definitely. Man, and so, and then you came back? I came back, yeah. I, um, so I took the Florida bar, and then I knew that I always wanted to raise a family or come back to yeah. Texas. So I took the Texas bar. I practiced in Florida for a few years, yeah. and then took the Texas bar. Are the bars harder in different states? Yeah, there's definitely a perception and mm -hmm. maybe an objective difficulty. Um, you know, New York, Texas, California yeah. is one of the hardest bars. Yeah. You, you, you just look at the failure rates and multiple <laughs> pass rates, but um, New York, California is hard. Texas is, is getting harder. Yeah. As, you know, the states increase desirability, they try to make it more difficult. Right. To yeah. try to protect the existing lawyers. We're sitting right across the street from one of SMU. our law schools, SMU Law School, the Dedman School of Law, right across the street. So did, she, did Beth follow you to Florida? No, no. We just uh, visited, and, and I was flying up to New York kind of uh, once or twice a month, and then... To kept, see kept, her? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, just serious. on the weekends. Yeah. I mean, law school is a little bit flexible, 
where I could go up on a Friday morning or Man, that's Thursday. nice because most people are like, oh, I'm in law school. I know. I can't it. do anything. I can't do anything. I can't breathe. I can't do anything. I'm in law school. So you had a very... little more. Well, it's probably because he's super smart. Yeah, he is. <laughs> well, probably, this is a breeze. Based off what we know he does as a hobby, he is, yes. he is, he's got a big brain. Yes. He's absolutely got a big brain. So, so now you, you moved back to Texas and then you convinced her to move back exactly. to Texas. Exactly. <laughs> you yeah. convinced her? Yeah. So I think, you know, after 10 years in New York, you, you come to a fork in the road. Yeah. And, and it, for a lot of people, it's either I'm going to commit and yeah. I, I'm going to be a New Yorker, get used to living in 680 square feet yep. and... Uh, not owning a car and, <laughs> and mm-hmm. being used to homeless people right outside your door. Yeah. And, right. you, you know, you're like, oh, well, this building's so much nicer because the homeless are, are yeah. gentle and friendly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, it's so you know, York. for her, it, it wasn't that lifestyle. Um, what was she doing in New York for a job? So she's always worked for different fashion companies mm-hmm. as a buyer merchant. Uh, so she's worked for Diane von Furstenberg and Victoria's Secret. And cool. Uh, nice. And but Taylor. she never... Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yes. They actually have their big office in New York, but they're out of Columbus. Yes. Right, yeah. right. So so for limited brands, they yeah. have their head office in, in Columbus, Columbus, but then they had a pretty big presence in New York. Yeah. yeah. Um, just as, you know, any yeah. serious fashion, U.S.-based fashion yeah. retailer should have. Yeah, Michael Kors is right there in New York. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. right across from Bryant Park. Yeah, totally get it. So you convinced her. You used all of your, all good of your looks. Lo, good looks and laurel, laurel. No, I can't say it. Laureling. No, attorney skills. I can't say that other word. Lawyer. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Negotiating skills to talk her into coming. Now, Beth, did you not grow up in Texas? I grew up actually in upstate New York, so not so too far away. Oh, you're an up. You, you're an upstate New York girl. Yes. So. So that's how you ended up in Cornell. Yeah. yeah. So this heat is definitely new to me. Oh but the God. winters aren't as bad. Correct. Yeah. No driving in snow. Yeah. Or walking or So did you did you ask her to come to Texas during the snowstorm? Because yeah. that's usually <laughs> the best time. It's like a blizzard whiteout All condition. That's yeah. exactly right. <laughs> hey, I'm going to Texas. Why don't you come down here? There's no snow. So and if there is you're a partner in a law firm here in Texas. Yeah, I have my own practice. Nice. Um, Doing a, a variety of uh, corporate and real estate work, but uh, nice have a, a third, you know, segment of that practice too, which is kind of this uh, cryptocurrency. Yes, or that's what yes. we want to know about. You just wrote an article. I did. Yeah, I did. We yeah. read it. It okay. was a uh, a very high level introduction, but um, you know, just talking to people in the neighborhood, mm-hmm. and then they always ask me questions and. Uh, I got tired of explaining the same yeah. intro <laughs> over and over, over again. You just read and the article. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was good. Um, it actually generated a lot of feedback. People in the neighborhood mm-hmm. just, you know, now you they come by. Exactly. I, yeah. I told Allie driving over here this morning that um, her husband is Landon. The two of you guys could hang out and talk all night long. And literally. never and Quite literally and never look up. Because she's reading this article. She's going, oh, my gosh, he's Landon. <laughs> Well, that's You're good. a little bit smarter than my husband, but hey, now don't say that. He may actually listen to this show. Uh, you are you are smarter than him, but yeah. he's pretty he's pretty whip smart, man. And he has so he's got me. It's definitely a hobby, so it's like he's doing pretty well. But it's just fully consuming. I just need to know right now: is it legit? You know, I I I get that question a lot, and and they say, what what is it worth? And I say, well, you know, you can't really underwrite. The value of something that is either worth a million dollars or it's worth zero. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's the inherent nature is that money and, and any artificial unit that we use has value placed on it by the users. Mm-hmm. And whatever I'm willing to trade you right. for whatever your unit of money is, then that's what it's worth. It's not a a process that you can value that says, okay, you know, this company is worth X or right. this amount of iron ore is is worth why it's very subjective but if you look at the technical benefits mm-hmm. and you look at the things that users need when they transact and they they buy their you know groceries or they buy their breakfast 
if you look at those qualities and you say that could have more value to people in a lot of ways that early money did, mm -hmm. um, you know, being smaller than a goat carrying right. around sheep under your arm right. and wanting to trade those. And then when you had gold and having a big brick of gold and, and saying, well, I only want to give you half of this, right. you know, denarii or something. Yeah. Right. It's not very convenient to, to cut it. And then you have uh, fraud problems and you mm -hmm. have fake gold or plated and people questioning the authenticity. So with Bitcoin, uh, you know, it seems like it has a lot of those stronger attributes, um, you know, in, you know, very small divisible pieces. You have a lot of trust among people. You can send money cross border. It's, it's anonymous. Um, it's fast. Yep. Uh, There's a lot of pros. Absolutely. But yeah. the cons, I think people, what scares people the most is just the unknown. They're just not uneducated about it. Well, it doesn't and, seem to be backed by anything. Well, that's good. But sometimes well, that, people can that, be, the yeah, that can be The backers are the, uh, the corrupt parties. Well, yeah. that's true. So I'm, I'm, I'm currently reading the biography of uh, Vanderbilt right now. And, I mean, it's, it's huge. On Audible, it's like 32 hours on Audible, right? So I have an eight-minute commute to work, so it's going to take me a little while. So I have it sped up when I'm listening to it, and I'm just looking at my calendar. Okay, when's my next big plane ride? I can get through part of this. But it's interesting, when, when Vanderbilt came on the scene, you know, like 50 years after the nation became a nation, this was an issue, right? Because we started off, we started off, you know, bartering, bartering and, you know, crops for whatever the case may be and then we moved to coins and then all of a sudden in new york city we kind of jumped into this this paper currency that some of it was worthless i mean it was just it meant absolutely nothing um but somebody would say okay look i've got a thousand gold pieces in a vault i'm going to give you this piece of currency against that thousand gold pieces you can redeem at any point in time exactly and then you just kind of get caught into this cycle of just redeeming this paper stuff at any point in time. But nobody's ever raised their hand and said, by the way, I'm just going to need my gold right now. Well, well they now do. It's just you going know. digital. Every now and then. They, they have then. a bank, ro bank run. And, you know, that, we, that's exactly right. We've seen those types of panics. But um, again, it's, it's all of money, once you get off the gold standard, is some form of like a Ponzi scheme yeah. uh, where you're just paying it forward. 100%. But at the same time, you know, a lot of the critics, and I think it's reasonable, is. You know they have an army behind it they can mm -hmm. they can force the citizens within their boundaries to accept and pay taxes and and trade in it right and so if you do that by the force of your army you are creating an artificial value or a floor kind of on the value of it say well at the end of the day even if nobody wants to accept it we have a gun and we're going to force you to, to use accept it. it and that's that's what the minimum value would be whereas yeah. with you know a lot of the digital currencies Nobody can force you to use it. And so if nobody forces you and nobody forces you to trade with it, the value can go to zero. And that's absolutely a, a risk. So that's why yeah. we have no more than 10 or 15 percent of our net worth ever in crypto at, at once. That's smart. Well, I don't know. I'm just, that's, that'd be a lot. But uh, yeah. No. yeah, yeah, yeah. During, yeah. during like the end of 2017, that number was definitely creeping up there. And I was yeah. uh, pretty nervous. But I actually own some. Landon, Landon talked me into... Um, investing in some okay. and of course he has to talk me off the um, the ledge every now and then because if I watch it too much Ron I'm not going oh my gosh what have I done right so um, and a, I just it's a holding I just for I just the long run dad. I know it I just put a little bit in but there's so many there's so many different I mean there's yeah Bitcoin it's not just Bitcoin, and it's Ethereum crypto. and XRP and Bitcoin cash and Litecoin and so there's a ton we can of talk these about different all of ones these after and get his mm -hmm. advice no, this is this is fascinating. This is what the whole show so needs to be. So many people, so many well, your your personal But <laughs> Bitcoin has gone yeah. up to ten thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. So recently well, it, it kinda popped. It, yeah, it's it, up. It went up to ten dropped. or thirteen and then it kinda dipped back down. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my investment's up right now. I'm just waiting for my because I think I own like um point eight decimal points. Of one Satoshi, bit, uh, yeah. <laughs> of one thing, right? Yeah, um, whatever that is. And I told him, I said, "Look, I'm buying that middle age crisis car when my Bitcoin gets to a certain level." He's gonna so pull out, and then I'm gonna, gonna be driving a truck forever. That's fair. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. so. Some of my friends, they're the ones that got me into Bitcoin early on. They were buying in 2013, oh wow, 2014. 
Well, it was different. You know, they were they were buying for a purpose. So yeah. they would buy 300 Bitcoin and then they would spend 200 and yeah, they would yeah. buy another 100 and right. spend 80. Right. It, you know, it wasn't something to them as an investment. It was a practical tool. So um, have you ever pulled out any money? Yeah, yeah. So so my kind of story is my friend had been telling about it really kind of since 2015, 2016. And mm-hmm. I said, oh, uh, yeah, sure. Okay. You know, like, here's my credit card. Buy, buy me some. Right, yeah. right. No, you, you can't do this. Not yeah. like that. Like, <laughs> okay. Well, this is too complicated. And I just never did the research. And it yeah. wasn't until uh, 27, early 2017 that I finally said, okay, you know, I'm going to understand this. And once I started reading about it, it was, yeah. it was fascinating. Mm-hmm. And I really like a lot of the principles and I like the long-term approach to it and, and the value to consumers so I, I bought a bunch and then it went up and every time it doubled i was just like, okay i gotta sell you know yeah. i'm a right. pretty risk averse person if, right. it, if my investments double i typically i'll lock in mm-hmm. you're never gonna go broke banking a profit um there you go and wow. so I that's like the that. one i want to put that in the show notes landed yeah <laughs> Keep going. So, so as it was climbing up in 2017, I just kept banking every double, and you know, still have plenty of Bitcoin left. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, so we got to around like the middle of 2017, and my friend and I said, well, "Okay, we have this decent amount of cash now. What do we do?" Mm-hmm. And then we flipped into mining, and so we really evaluated the differences between uh, ASICs, which are you know, uh, application-specific integrated circuits for mining. Um, Bitcoin, yeah. right. for lack of a better, right. or, or GPU mining, which is like using video cards and kind of mm-hmm. building little computers that mine some of the al- alternate coins like Ethereum and, and Litecoin and such. So um, what we what we did was we took that profit and mm-hmm. quote reinvested it sure. into this hardware, which again, there's a lot of analogies. And you're to, like full in because a lot of people would have gotten by a house <laughs> or a car. So my friend paid off his law school That's debt, nice. which was Dude. pretty nice because he had, nice. he had six figure debt, Not and then, you know, he was asking me too, and I said, look, if if you can if you can bank some type of profit, even if you tell me that it's going to double in the yeah. next five years, right. double in the next three years, if you can bank it and pay off something tangible that right. that mm-hmm. is a worthwhile goal, yeah. if you want to buy your your Corvette or nine eleven, whatever sure, your yeah. level is, yeah. You know, just do it because you're not going to go broke banking a profit and you're putting it towards something that's, that's tangible, yeah. not just so fear, smart. right? Yeah. You don't want right. to pull out because of fear or an irrational uh, dip in the market and then mm-hmm. people pull. That, to me, right. that's the worst. But uh, so anyway, so we did kind of the same approach. We were, we were taking out money and, and once we hit the threshold, we said, okay, we did a lot of research. We built a lot of these computers. Um, so we have about 30 uh, GPU cards, 1080 so Ti's. you fully believe wow. in this because you're. Well, he's in. I, he's I, in. I believe in it, but um, so we're mining. Because you're putting all, you're putting most of your profit in back into. So. This. That's right. But yeah. it's it's into what I would consider an asset. Yeah. Uh, it's a depreciating computer asset. Yeah. But we we're able to mine back then, and we we're buying the cars before the inflation as well. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you know, uh, we we're mining, and then it was very profitable. You know, they're making like 10 or 12 bucks a day. Uh, mining yeah and then so we wow. paid off paid off the That's cards paid off our computer Chick-fil-A equipment lunch. and yeah. then um yeah for each for one yeah. each day yeah. <laughs> That's right. and then uh so once the equipment is paid off then you know your in your return is basically infinite right yeah. so it's kind of nice uh you know you have electricity but right that's net mm-hmm. so you know fast forward to kind of now we're just figuring out what the next thing is going to be because uh I think the lesson, and we both kind of talk about it now, is that uh, the main reason I think we or he was successful in mm-hmm. giving this advice was being early. Yeah. Because that's what helped everything was. He was know, really me, early. The, he was early, but he was in. He was early for different reasons. Yeah. yeah. And um, so for me, it was buying, being decisive early for you know December of 2017. Right. So as long as you sold your Bitcoin before then, you were yeah. fine. And then I had something to reinvest that money in. Landon didn't and, sell. And he wasn't fine. He's holding, yeah. Well, he's still holding. He's, he's still holding. Yeah. He's fine, in it for you know? the long run, yeah. going to the moon, all of these little terms. But, but that's some it's gonna wisdom. It's going to be a bear market you never go or broke a bull banking, market. Banking a profit. That's really So do you think we're in a bear or a bull? For crypto in general or yeah. Bitcoin? Yeah. Um, Again, I, I I take the same approach to you know my stock investing. Is mm-hmm. I don't look at my portfolio. I don't even look at it monthly. Because oh, Landon looks at it 
daily. I mean, unless he's <laughs> making a, unless he's making a change, to yeah. me, looking at it daily is is just fruitless. It's yes. not productive, and it's really it's a waste he needs of your to listen time. To this. Yep. So, so for my stock investing, I am definitely of the uh, the Warren Buffett and kind of mm-hmm. the Benjamin Graham school of just intelligent investor, long term. Yeah. Play the long term market. I'm putting money in there. I don't need, and I'm not a day. Oh, baby. So she loves the uh, the playground now mm-hmm. here because she oh, gets to interact right. with other kids. Yeah. That's right. Now you're tall, and you can run. She can climb up. She can go all, all throughout it. That's what? so awesome. Oh, my gosh. You're going to have to build one at your house now. <laughs> you guys, are you guys in the M Streets? We are. We're yeah. very close. So yeah. if you're listening and you're not part of Dallas, the M Streets are kind of the hip, cool the hip part of town. Like, um, where do you want to live? They date back to the M 30s, Street. I think. Mm-hmm. 20s and 30s. That and the Disney and Streets are all, there's the like Dis- a whole the thing Disney of like every, cool. well, it's just iconic neighborhoods the disney yeah. street and consistent street. architecture yeah, yeah. i think yeah. all those disney is what are they mid-century modern yeah, they mm-hmm. are yeah centuries yeah. they're yeah. big houses yeah yeah nice so this bitcoin stuff is absolutely 100 percent fascinating so i got a somebody connected with me on linkedin this week what did we uh, did we answer the question if you think it's a bear Board. market or bull um okay so my so my long-term prognosis you know i'll look at some charts and it's consistently had these climbs and uh-huh. crashes climbs and crashes yeah. um we're still within the standard deviation of the level of the crash and giving it enough time to come back mm-hmm. you know it's plus or minus but i, I do think that the the pop up to 13 was good and yeah. we're still going to see this longer term because i think we're in a very long term bear market now we're recovering from the crash but mm-hmm. again it didn't it didn't crash below to like zero you know it right. didn't crash right. like 500 dollars or something yeah so there are still people propping up the price and we're still seeing a lot of people interested in the technology people are still learning there's still adoption mm-hmm. so i think again it's it's a good sign for longer term bear you know more people use it you just have to get marketing you got to get the word out there so that whatever percentage of users end up buying bitcoin you know like yourself how long did it take you to get to that point you just need to spread that to maybe it's only 10 percent of the population that's a good question yeah but six six months yeah yeah but it hasn't gotten to all of the population yet right you know it's not pervasively known like i wouldn't have known a facebook account yeah Yeah, they say if everybody on the world knows about Facebook, half of them will make it, or probably more. Yeah. But they took some time to to spread the word. Mm-hmm. It's true. So. I had somebody connect with me on LinkedIn How this week. How long did the hey, internet hang on. take? I started. I start, I'm gonna. Re- no. I'm not gonna. Well, write remember. it down. Write it down. Go ahead. Write it down. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was trying to say, how long did the internet take to catch on? Nineties. Well, I know, and I, but like how long from like saying like, hey, this is going to be the next big thing because everyone was like, yeah, right. There's still yeah. people saying this internet thing ain't going to work. I, I mean, I think it definitely took a long time and that scaled with uh, internet speeds, mm-hmm. right? Because I can still remember our first internet, um, we had a 14.4 Dial up modem. Oh my gosh. And then the minute someone gets on the phone and it's like, mom, Knocks get you off, off yeah, the phone. Yeah, yeah. So, and people criticize that and they say, oh, the technology is so clunky. You know, what are you going to do? You go on the Internet and you can just text file like it's not useful. Like, yeah. You could just pick up the phone and just call people. I could read a letter. I could read a magazine so mm-hmm. much faster than you downloading right. from a bulletin board. And so, again, you know, there's a lot of critics on both sides and I think their complaints are reasonable. But that should just spur or encourage the engineers to build faster Internet, right. to build yeah. faster modems, to com- better compression. And so to answer your question, I mean, I think it takes a series of, of years, if not like a decade. Mm-hmm. You have the 90s, late 90s boom. Yeah. But then it crashed. Right. And right. it's the same thing. You know, you looked at all their stocks and a lot of pets.com, you know, they go under. But that's the medium or the technology is still very much uh, with us. And you just have to have a 20 year, yeah. 30 year horizon. Yeah. yeah. Right? I just saw a show on Showtime, the documentary on Giant Magic which when Apple laid off some people, they went and they started this little company, startup company to create a smartphone. And all of the technology, they, they put this thing out and it bombed. And they showed, they were- Was they it a Palm Pilot? Or it, it, pre, pre, pre it was, the, it, was the, <laughs> it was the giant magic. 
Um, and they created a documentary during this process that Showtime showed this documentary that they created back in the 90s, okay? They're interviewing people on the street out in front of these stores. Hey, uh, what about this device? You could get your email, which was very early on. You can get your email and um, send messages. And one lady on the street they interviewed, she said, I just don't know if I want to be that connected. Ooh. 19, Ooh. 1990, right? 1990. Insightful. And yes. they were the darling of Wall Street. They showed their stock straight up. And then within three months of launching this, bankrupt. Bankrupt. And then uh, six months later, the Newton came out. Mm. And then Steve Jobs comes back to Apple. And they introduced the iPod and then the iPhone. And the world changed. Everything we knew changed. So the co-creator of the iPod, Steve Jobs, and one of the other people that was co-creator, worked at Giant Magic. They were one of the people that when it went bankrupt, they left. So in this documentary, um, they, they, they did a freeze frame of all the people because they're all sitting around. They were hippies and, you know, flip flops and they were living in their garages. In, they were living in this space, sleeping on the floor, trying to crank out to get this product to market. And they did a freeze frame of all these people sitting around in this documentary. And then they started putting tags on all these young kids on what they're doing today. It is scary. They're running the world. Yep. <laughs> they're running the world. So they move around and the two big ones, two kids set 15 feet apart in cubicles coding and today, one of them, co-creator of the iPod and the iPhone, and the other one, creator of the Android phone. Android phone. Android phone. Ninety-eight percent of the phones these two guys co-created, and they started in this little place. They were 15 years too early. The CEO was later right. interviewed, and he said, we had the right idea. We were just too early to the market right. for this right. idea, and just absolutely blew away. They told one of the stories. So do you think crypto is a little early? Yeah, in, in some cases, um, a lot of counter arguments I hear from, say, my business clients, too. I said, why do I need to do this? You know, the bank works just fine. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, yeah, you know, you still have a fair amount of uh, banking freedom and you're on a white list. Mm -hmm. But what happens when some government or the U.S. says, no, we actually don't like, you know, you selling your arts and crafts to China. We're going to ban your account and freeze you. So that you can't even transact with with other people in the U.S. and you say this is insane. I sold one order, or they placed one order from from a banned China list. Why is my all of my banking now frozen? And it will be very frustrating. And you're yeah. gonna maybe wish you had some alternative means to you know accept payments and mm -hmm. pay vendors and pay your rent and and buy your groceries. So it will be interesting if the world government or you know i mean we're already seeing i don't want to go too much into the politics but, yeah. <laughs> but it's definitely concerning the amount of arbitrary power that they have and and how they can uh you know the u.s too is as blacklisting um a lot of chinese you know quote i'm doing air quotes uh, <laughs> private companies that yeah. they say are too much state influence and they're saying you know you're too cozy huawei and mm. and whether that's a legitimate, accurate percep uh, perception of them, right. I don't know. Yeah. But the point is, they've made that determination. It's it's not in a court of law. It's not um, in front of a neutral fact finder. It's just the executive branch saying, can't nope, do it. you can't do it. Can't do it. And so when that starts to affect smaller companies, uh, they're going to be scrambling for an alternative because the the outrage, you know, the frustration. They're gonna, you can say banking works for you now, and I got yeah. Zelle, and I got yeah, Venmo. Yeah. Thing. It's all tied to your social. It's all tied to your company's EIN. If you lock up that EIN, all your accounts go dark. Right. That's and you're going to be desperate to have a, you know, no, not backed by anybody and saying, look, you know, pay me in crypto. I demand that you pay me in crypto because it's the only thing that I have 100% control of that I can pay my vendors. I can pay my employees. Right. I and hopefully, you know, your employees can go down the street and, and pay for their bills. Buy Chick-fil-A with it. Right. Right. And so, you know, we're, if we see more adoption of the, uh, you of the merchants, then you'll see more consumers willing. You worry willing. that uh, Korea is, is mining it, it by, like crazy? No, that's fine. Isn't there, Anybody only, can mine. Okay, good. isn't there only so much of it, right. though? Right. Right. Yeah. So that's another counter argument to fiat currency. Mm -hmm. You know, for paper money, the value is is inherently controlled by the production source so they yeah. they just print more money and they can yeah. do two things you know they can devalue so their own that, debt that is and then thing. they can also just increase money supply and 
you know, there, I was at a talk um, a couple weeks ago and we were talking about nobody has done an audit of the Fed. Mm. You know, it's, it's never really been understood how much currency is out in circulation. They put out estimates, they put out goals and they talk about the impacts and they talk about how much paper money is lost, but they don't really know. And, and Congress has never audited them to say, how much money are you guys really printing? They, they look at data like this quarter we printed X amount of, we put this money bills in circulation right. and that's fine. But how much total, how much yeah. is out there? Could you imagine? Because the, the opposite is if you have something like Bitcoin mm -hmm. with a finite value, you're not going to get rampant inflation. You can't devalue it with a, a central source. And Do so you think by, there's enough for everyone to well, use it? Well, because there's, there's what, 21 million and then, you know, divisible to eight. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's enough to last for a pretty long time. But uh, even if we do catch up with inflation and, you know, one Satoshi ends up being a lot of money to, to buy a house, mm -hmm. you can come up with a new coin. I mean, there will be something new. The technology is there that says if having a finite number mm -hmm. is a useful feature, somebody can come up with an even smaller division of that. Finite um, number, and, right, right. And, you know, maybe it'll be really comical that, like, we, you know, I want my daughter to say, oh, yeah, my dad used to buy like two or three Bitcoin at a time. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, he's so rich. He's so rich. <laughs> two or three. Oh, my gosh. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I think it's a useful feature because it yeah. prevents this runaway kind of, um, well, it maybe creates, it prevents runaway inflation, but it also might increase the value too much where people try to hoard it. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, well, there's major companies that are getting involved Absolutely. into this yeah. rappers are rapping about it and it's a thing it's a thing yeah so i i'm gonna tell my story now oh i thought you already told it i no. thought the magic no no no, oh. no no i had somebody connect with me on linkedin this week and they sent me a message and said tony hey it's great to connect i have a business proposition for you oh yes uh how would you like to make six thousand dollars mining bitcoin hmm all it takes is a ten thousand dollar investment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like going, okay, this is this is interesting. Uh, I'm now being propositioned to mine Bitcoin on yeah. LinkedIn. It it's, happens, and they're going to pay me six thousand dollars to do it. Hmm. It's an easy six thousand dollars. Fortunately, nowhere in the in the conversation did it say, and you have a relative in Africa who's a prince that. It, if you'll just send them some money, they can free themselves. So but uh, yeah, a lot of people lost money uh, in the earlier days too because they didn't understand it and they would just think it's internet magic, internet money. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And right, you know, I, I'm very sympathetic to the regulatory concerns, but I don't see how you can prevent it. You know, it's kind of the uh, people's inherent greed and they want. Some, they want to believe something is too good to be true. Yeah. How can you stop it? You, you're never going to be able to regulate it. Um, and the, the positives to me of having a non-centrally backed, you know, permissionless currency transfer outweigh the harm to individuals who, you know, made that self-choice to send somebody a tenth of a Bitcoin because they promised to send me back 0.2. Right. Like, why? How? What are the mechanics there? If, if it's so easy for them to print money why aren't they just doing right. it themselves why do they need your bitcoin mm -hmm. and if they do you know they, they they will scam people and use other people's money to pay them back in a ponzi scheme to get them to promote especially with influencers and that kind of thing so you know maybe we can look at something of influencers i think yeah. they're already doing that with liability for uh posting internet comments you know now websites and stuff are responsible for the content that users post and that's mm -hmm. that's a big shift that's a thing yeah fosta yeah that's wow. a thing yeah yeah did you know about that no oh that's interesting we're gonna have to look into that you know we're pra we're practically digital now i mean I, the last time i pulled out an actual bill right i mean i pay for most every time i come in here i pay with my phone yeah so do we. We have the Chick-fil-A yeah, app. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I have the app, and it's like, ding. And I just, I, so I, I actually have a wallet. It has a couple of bills in it, but I'm like, I can't remember. Maybe when I tipped a valet was the last time I See, used so, an so actual it, bill. And, and that's a probably uh, good use case if you want to test it out because you could put 20, 50 bucks 
in crypto on your phone, right. and then when you have the valet, he just puts out his phone, or he has a he has a QR code or somewhere oh. where you can scan it passively. Bang. And then you just you know you Bang. just tip him like that. Easier than cash. You'll have a you'll That's have right. a, a record of it, but not a, a you know uh, a trans a public transaction right. type of thing. But it's technically, just, couldn't credit cards do that? Well, that's what I do every time I tap my uh, phone. Yeah, the, the but for front. like cash, like they do could, the QR. But, it, but would the you? Card company's making money on that. That's right. So yeah. would you want to pay, you know, three percent, three and a half percent yeah. on a dollar, a, t- a two dollar yeah. tip? Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Convenience. One of my favorite Big Bang shows is when Bitcoin first came out, and they were all talking about it on the show, and it's like, hey, I, you know, this, I, I think we could do this. Of course, you know, Big Bang Theory, the whole, the whole premise is that they're really super smart, and so they mine all this stuff, and they put. All of their Bitcoin, which was apparently, I don't know, like thousands of Bitcoin at the time on a USB drive. And then the whole show was about, we lost the USB drive. (laughs) And then they find it and Stuart finds it, the guy at the comic book store and goes, oh, USB drive. Wow. Plugs it in and says, well, I'll just dump whatever's on here and just use the, you know, (laughs) the drive. So much money. So do I you? Know, ex- everybody's doing the math, going, "Oh my gosh, it's so much money." So do you accept crypto in your? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it's. I think it's one of the. Uh, Has tenants. anyone paid you in oh, crypto yeah. yet? Yeah, it's awesome. So for it's my awesome. practice, you know, and especially this was in 2018, more so, I was fielding a lot of calls of, of interested people. But mm-hmm. uh, what I found was because I was in the industry and because I knew people, those same people suddenly had more cash and they were doing the same types of contracts so they might be signing a lease they might be uh, taking investors they might be brokering something and then anytime you've increased the value of the transaction they have some concern of maybe i should just paper this up with a lawyer or have somebody look at it yeah and then i say okay well if you want me to give my opinion you know i, I can charge for some time so i you know a very small section of my practice you know probably no more than 10 percent not that many lawyers uh, who are who are active in the space. There's like not. Yeah, I know it. And so you know we're yeah, like it, a small community. It freaks my CPA out because the minute we were in the meeting and Landon's like, oh yeah, crypto. She's like, whoa, 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 and it freaks her out. So there's a lot of people that just aren't educated and they don't know what to do about it because there's no. I mean, it's just not we done don't even, a lot. Of, we don't even yeah. have a practice on it, or we're, we're the yeah. largest in the world. Yeah. So we don't have a full Well, you guys are hiring practice. for a lawyer, and you should have put that in the uh, job description. Yeah, you should. Uh, I Chief know people it. officer, right? I know it. I should have. I saw the uh, the posting, but it had a lot of tax and... Uh, <laughs> Ish. Tax requirements and uh, gap accounting for a lawyer. And I said, well, that's outside my wheelhouse. Yeah, well, that was for... We had a couple come up. I have another one coming up right now. We should talk offline. You may, <laughs> you may, you may know people. You may know people. Yeah. What's definitely. the biggest part of the practice right now? Of your practice right now? Real estate. Yeah. Don, so, tons of investment into Texas. Uh, so oh, yeah. Business Journal said that it's uh, starting to it's starting to slow down. Real estate prices are. Starting but then to they drop. just did a Fed c- uh, the rate cut. Yeah, I think that's going to just just come back up. It's um it's been very interesting. I mean, I love talking about this macroeconomic trends, yeah. but um. I don't see a recession, even if there's a nationwide recession, it's not going to affect Texas. It's not going to affect North Texas. Uh, what we see now are, you know, a lot of people moving from right. all the high tax jurisdictions in the Northeast mm-hmm. out of California. Yeah. Um, and they're coming here and, and they're buying houses yeah. and they're generating demand. And with the improvements or advances in remote working, I've got people that says, okay, one person uh, has, can work from home and one person lost their job. So then they're going to move to Dallas where one person has a job and the other one can remote work. And that's very common now. A lot of oh, people yeah. accept it. You can fly back to California to do some meetings. But we know people that yeah. do that. So, so <laughs> that trend is just going to continue because right. people want to keep their money and they're going to move to Texas. They're going to generate demand for consumer goods, retail, yep. housing. So We think that Texas is the best. Yeah, I, I share that. The, yeah. So real estate from... from what standpoint? Doing real estate deals, putting together yeah, so I, deals? Yeah, I'll so rep, I'll represent a lot of uh, buyers and sellers for okay. investment properties. So like an okay. office, uh, multifamily, uh, retail, you know, hospitality, whatever type of uh, warehouse, industrial use. So it's anything that you have a, uh, a contract and you have some due diligence in terms of reviewing leases, reviewing vendor agreements, 
and then I'll review the financing docs, the loan agreement, the promissory note, Love covenants. It. How can they find you? Because we'll put it in the show notes. Okay, what, what yeah, e email is the best way probably. Yeah. Um, R R O H D E at Pamla P A M L A W dot com. P A M L A W dot com. All right, I'll put that in the show notes. All right, great. All right, awesome, sis. Hi, low. Hi, low. I'll go first. Is that what you're <laughs> you want to go first? So well, I can go first. You so can go high first. low, we we talk about this every week. High part of your week, low part of your week, and what'd you learn? So sis, high or low? What are you gonna do? Hi. Well, this is just a weird week. I'm glad it's over. <laughs> I'm ready for it to be over. Just move on. Put some more time in between this week and there's 52 to choose yep, from. So I'm every ready, now and then, ready for it. Um, man, this is one of those just <sighs> just a weird week. Can't really talk a lot about it because I'm learning my lessons from that week. It's been a this week, week of learning. Of Is that your high? Week of learning, it's I guess. A week of learning? No. No? Hi. I've I had a lot of lunches and hanging out with friends this week, so I got to see a lot of them, and I have a ton lined up for next week, so that's probably high. Low was that it was a learning week? <sighs> Low was a learning week. Skin my knees. But that mm -hmm. could be a high in some cases. No. <laughs> Not right now. It doesn't Not look right like now. a high right now. Not right now. Maybe a year from now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe a year from now. All right, you're just going to leave it there? Yeah. All right, Ron, hi, Lo. Uh, I think high for me is my, my brother's getting married. <gasps> oh, fun. Sweet. So Where? He here? Does he live here? No, or? he lives in L.A., so they live in Malibu. Oh, uh, wow. Wow. No, he's like the more, he's a successful brush. I always joke, <laughs> that, I joke with my wife Aww. that she picked the wrong room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, he, he's got older a nice brother? house. He's older? a younger brother. Younger Is he a brother attorney as well? Awesome. No, no, he works in finance, so he's the smart wow. side. But um, in crypto? No, <laughs> no. no, really? He, Does he, he tell you that you're crazy or? Oh, no, man. he just tells me to be cautious. cautious. Interesting. Yeah. But yeah. no, he um he actually has a lot of meetings with Tim Draper, and so it's really funny because he'll text me a picture of him with Draper, and he's like. Look, he's wearing a silly Bitcoin tie. <laughs> like, yeah, you should uh, ask him for some advice. Because yeah. he bought like 100,000 uh, Bitcoin yeah. from what? the government. Yeah, when they when they seized Silk Road, wow. it was at auction. So he, at the time, Bitcoin wow. was trading like 1,000, 2,000. He paid, you know, 150,000 for this 1,500 Bitcoin. He's sitting happy. Oh. Well, he's already a billionaire, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. the, you know, it's kind of that mentality of the investment. So yeah. that's a high for me. He announced the date and he's just yeah. going to have like a small ceremony and uh, Fun. At, over and at his house. At his house. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's doing like, I guess the wedding and then the reception. Yeah. They have a pretty big house. So yeah. It's Malibu. It is a Malibu. Because, I mean, no. They had so he had uh, fires. So his yeah. house is like up on the edge and, and they look down uh, into a canyon. Yeah. Um, and the fire was burning all in their canyon. Mm -hmm. They evacuated, mm -hmm. and luckily their HOA was pretty on top of it, and they kept the fire break. They maintained it, right. and so they had 30 or 40 feet of you know no brush right. and no trees. So the fire break wow. is you know it still doesn't stop it if there's yeah. an ember that right. flies over Jumps in the over. wind, right. but it stopped the the growth of ground flame. Right. So yeah. their whole neighborhood, nobody lost a house. Wow. And they're all you know, taking a breath because yeah, yeah, other yeah. people in other canyons over I've heard stories. weren't so lucky. I mean, yeah. a tree falls down mm -hmm. or, or they didn't maintain it as well. Mm -hmm. Anything yeah. could have uh, linked That's awesome. that fire. And then once it gets in, I've heard so stories. he's getting married or he did get, he's, no, he's, he's going to get married in November, but he's been dating this girl for oh, ever. So he just, proposed. He's been engaged for, no, he's been engaged. Oh. He was engaged before we got married. Oh. <laughs> but since we knew each other, you know, it's yeah, kind of yeah, different. Yeah. Right. But still, it's like, they're engaged. Yeah. And, oh, they're going to get married. Great. And, no, right. just not yet. Some stuff happened. Oh, yeah, we're yeah. so traveling. Okay, no, okay. Then we happy. got engaged. And, you know, because we got engaged and married within a, like a year. Nice. We were just like, we're, right. we're, we're, you yeah. know, we're old. Yeah. <laughs> but then for him, it's like, oh, we just need to do this and debating this and then. So anyway, that's a high. Nice. Awesome. What Happy for him. Low? I don't have any lows. Oh. I, I'm really like, uh, I'm ascribed to a lot of, you know, every day I wake up and I'm really excited to do everything that I do. Mm -hmm. if, if I wake up and there's something that I'm not looking forward to, I don't do it anymore. Because I have a lot of control and I, and I 
dictate my time to say. So what say, happens if you have a horrible client? You fire just them. I fire them. I love. I don't love. Them. <laughs> I, I fire clients. So like every year, I look at the ten bottom ten percent, twenty percent. You know, and and the rule is they consume roughly eighty percent of your time. It's yeah. kind of the reverse yep. Pareto principle, right. but you have to fire them. They are bringing you down. They're mm -hmm. they're they're draining your energy. They are not a positive source. And so for me, from a financial perspective, they mm -hmm. take so much time and they're not worth the money. And I just cut them because I don't like them. And yeah. I go above and beyond for my clients, and I want to be able to help them. I want to enjoy going that extra mile. And that's what all my clients are. Yeah. And if they're not, then I fire them. You fire them up. Whoa. Or I just I just price myself so that you know I, I do the so. nice thing. I say my rate's gonna be uh, five hundred and seventy five dollars yeah. for this matter, and they say, Ron, that's that's crazy. That's so expensive. I could go down and hire you know Baker Boss, like, okay. Vincent. And I'm like, yeah, maybe yeah, you can yeah, go go yeah. ahead. Go I can ahead. Refer, I'll give you guys phone <laughs> number. I, 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 I know somebody. Oh, it's a big yawn, Miss Violet. That's a big yawn. That is a very interesting theory way of living I well you're it. you're self-employed you control 100 yeah. percent of your time and if you're unhappy oh it's so you hard, have though. nobody to blame but, but yourself by self, i know i mean unless you got to put food on the table mm -hmm. you know and, and i'm definitely sympathetic to that but there's all those studies once you're oh, above yeah. like 100 grand and and you know you're not going to get any more happiness by making more money so just yeah. cut the clients because it's very clear that pain in the neck clients Mm -hmm. make you unhappy and they're not contributing a lot to your bottom line and they're not she's an hourly that. she's done that i mean you started off doing almost yeah, all calligraphy only weddings and i was like nope not doing this anymore moved on to other things and, and did and she cut out and it wasn't because the um, not all brides are godzilla but yeah i mean most of them most if of them if they're well it's it's because it's a very them. emotional time it absolutely is. And, it's stressful and the so invitation you don't have ended up any getting caught up in low it. so if if something's like starting to feel like it's gonna be a low you're like nope it's out but, i don't know i shouldn't and say then that. Just, i mean i definitely have my own faults uh, my, wife will, my wife will tell you too There's a lot of things <laughs> i do we feel, need to get beth on and say I, okay i do okay, feel bad when uh you know, I, I'm not as thoughtful of them. Or yeah. I, I don't uh, help out with the baby as much as I could. So that that would be a low when I feel like I've let the family down. But Yeah. Um, yeah, and I get frustrated too with the. Uh, I guess I that should say happen. that this is we're creating a high low app, if you yeah. haven't heard. Um, so because I can never remember my high lows. But I did another high is I was not liking my morning routine i oh, was that's right annoyed with it it was not useful it wasn't i was just wasting time scrolling through my phone like that's just ridiculous in bed, sitting in, in bed yeah for two hours well that's yeah that's a long time <laughs> a long time i'm like this is ridiculous her schedule. well yeah i have control of my schedule i don't need i wake up and i'm like oh, i don't really need to start my day until my assistant come over so i'm just gonna sit here so I was like, you know what? Do something different. Screw this. Gonna do something different. So I started walking. And I have been walking every single day except Friday. And it was great. All those extra endorphins I know. starting to bulk up. No, definitely. She's like yeah. being on the juice. I know. I'm a little feisty this week. I uh, know. She's a little and sassy this week. It's getting me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it's just modulating feistiness. All right, let's do fast questions. Okay. Beth is chasing Violet all around. Although she's going to have a great morning nap. <laughs> she will. She, she. I don't know if it'll be Beth or Violet that'll have the morning nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Last questions. It's a perfect. Um, I was about to say sun, Sunday, but it's not Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Um, rainy Saturday. I know. Rainy for Saturday. For a nap. Dallas. I know. Fast questions. Are you ready? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Pizza. <laughs> she was asking you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought she was asking if I was ready. I think this is for you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Pizza or burgers? Pizza. Go on. <laughs> she always gets on to me. What kind? Favorite pizza in Dallas? We go a lot to uh, Fireside Pies or Ooh, Pie Tap. Oh, yes. Nice. They're good. Yeah, we walk, good. we walk Because you're white. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're like right, you're right over there. there. Yeah. All right. So, coffee or tea? Coffee. Yeah. Iced? Apparently. Do you do ice in the summer and then hot in the winter? Are you one no. of those type of people? So I typically will drink hot coffee when I go in because our office is freezing yes. cold. And I feel like I'm in the Arctic. I, I yes. need it to warm my hands. 
because if I'm not typing, my fingers will turn <laughs> like ice cubes. So no, I drink hot coffee at work. Yeah. Aren't you the boss at work though? Not of the AC. Yeah. Oh. I mean, it's, it's, it's a building. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I was going to say, yeah. I was like, Are you downtown, can't downtown? you control? No, we're, uh, we're off uh, Northwest Highway in 75. You know Campbell Center? The big gold towers? Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. You're there? Yeah, Sweet. we're there. They're finally we're coming there. back into style. Those are it iconic. Is. <laughs> it's iconic because as somebody say. that grew up here, that's right. yeah. I used to drive and like, oh, that's, that's so right. cool. Yeah, yeah. All things. you have to say is gold buildings in yeah, Dallas and like people know bang. exactly what they are. Right. Yeah, yeah, they are okay. coming back. They are so it's really, yeah, I was going to say too, we did like a portrait session with Giddings mm-hmm. for people that grew up here. Yeah. It's like, you know, George Bush. and all these. Oh, you know, it, was, it was pretty cool. That is cool. That is awesome. All right, fast questions. These aren't fast. Last meal on earth. Oh, interesting. There's a lot of food, I know a guy thing it is i could tell you what ask you what your favorite thing in your closet is but i don't think it's, not, it's like yeah. a t-shirt or something <laughs> uh, i don't know last meal it's kind of not important i would say <laughs> wow that's, that's my last answer. meal yeah that's a great answer it doesn't matter it doesn't matter because can't you go, okay, like, I can go 24 you... hours without eating you know sometimes yeah, i, I get in, i get working Forget. and i won't eat for like 10 hours straight and i'm just like oh i know you're what like, i eat for lunch up, i'm like hold on what i eat for breakfast i think i know yeah um, so if you could have one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Pizza with salad on top. Ooh. Salad on top of your pizza? I like that. Do you idea. go to CeCe's? Oh, we used to go to CeCe's. Don't they stuff. have, don't yes, they have they a do. taco salad <laughs> pizza? Yeah, taco salad. <laughs> yeah. Totally, all day long. Yeah. Uh, your biggest pet peeve? Oh. Uh, cheap he's, he's so he <laughs> love he loves his life he doesn't yeah. have pet peeves no i'm i'm okay yeah, road I, rage that's what no because i have a pretty short commute that's i ride nice. my bike to work <gasps> you do sometimes that's awesome Dang. i wish that texas what that's the only downfall of dallas is it's not, not very bike friendly, bike friendly. My, yeah. or walking or anything M like streets that. to the gold buildings that's a pretty good bike ride Oh, uh, just so there's a trail that yeah. goes all yeah, the way yeah. up by SMU, and then I can take along the train tracks is yeah. kind of alley, and so I'm I take Greenville yeah. for only mm-hmm. a very short section, basically from Lovers, yeah, to uh, the Gold Buildings, the Gold Buildings, yeah. So it's I not love it. Too that's, bad. That's way cool. Yeah, that's nice. Beth, uh, Ron's trying to figure out what his biggest pet peeve is. Do you know it? People <laughs> who make inconsistent life choices. I don't oh, there you go. Yeah. That's a good one. All day long. But I don't judge people for it. I just try to well, yeah. see how I can... Profit you- off of <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I wasn't going to be that cynical. But yeah, we talk about how, you know, every a lot of people we know will complain about things in their life that they actually have a lot of control over, but yeah. they refuse to change. Yeah. And uh, it's frustrating. Going back to being an entrepreneur and you have full, yeah. full responsibility of your own time but people are like oh my gosh i'm overworked i work 12 hours i hate my boss i hate my yeah. job and i'm saying well I'm like, you don't need uh, that much money you live in a huge house and you live far away because you wh- why i mean you complain about your commute because you live far away right. because mm-hmm. you wanted a new house did you need a new house no mm-hmm. right. you wanted it so then you should want the commute that came yeah. with it that's right so it's, it's very interesting because you know especially in our age i mean i think we're on the cusp of millennial or not but um you're close you're we're, close we're close and so they complain about our generation and i'm saying well, I, i'm with you i'm complaining about That's my own <laughs> people because I, I see it and and it's not just us but there's a lot of lack of uh i don't say accountability because again i'm sympathetic to people's conditions there are a lot of things that are outside of their control that are a handicap or something that hurts them mm-hmm. external but you have to acknowledge that there are a lot of things that you can do that are are within your control. And if you come to me and tell me, Ron, you know, I've got these four hours a day that are within my control. That is all I have. I'll say, great, make those four hours count. Yep. Be a rock star. Yeah. I'll, you know, I'll help you, but you have those four hours. You can't come to me and say, I have zero. You right. know, right. I, yeah. I have I got 30 minutes to myself. That's all. And I just want to use it to watch TV, one episode on Netflix. I'm like, <laughs> no, that's, 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 pretty that's a cop out right yeah um so i love it that's I my pet it. peeve what's that's the last per- one i mean man i have two more okay someone you would want to have lunch with oh. dead or alive i would say like mark cuban oh yeah i yeah. I, 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 I mean i know some people <laughs> how I'm much does it how much does it cost oh uh, <laughs> that's so funny 
That because um, that's that's all you have to do, right? So yeah, yeah. I've always I've thought about this too. My wife has asked me like yeah, for a birthday lives, present. He lives down. But you know, yeah, for if, if I present. said what I really really want is to have lunch or coffee with Mark Cuban, fifteen minutes. Okay, you say fine. We talk to the right people and they're mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, he has this in his schedule. He's doing this charity event for yeah. the Mavs. Right. Would you like to donate ten thousand? And if yeah. it's like a huge goal and it's a lifelong dream, it's okay. We'll give the ten thousand. Ron gets fifteen minutes. It's it's really achievable. So then I kind of back off and I say, man, if it's that easy, I don't right. want I don't want to spend ten thousand yeah. just to yeah. have yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So my answer is like How much? the free the free, the free meal or, right. with somebody is the feeling. best. Is yeah, because I think he's he's really uh, uh, practical in the so sense do you watch that Shark Tank. I mean, I've watched it sometimes. Yeah. We don't watch. We don't have cable. Oh. So. Hulu, Netflix, none. We yeah. Well, we we borrow Netflix yeah. temporarily, same, same. but um, now I, I read a lot of books. So. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. You haven't written mine. Not yet. Okay. Because you didn't bring it. Because you haven't oh, given geez. to him. Yep. Okay. Last one. What could you tell, or what advice would you tell your younger self? I brought a book. You brought a book. Good job. He planned that. That was fake yeah. excitement. Fake surprise. I would tell my younger self to uh, do fewer things for other people's expectations and oh. really try to do what I wanted to do. Because I think looking back, you know, I didn't have a lot of uh, internal drive for a long time. And I should have done more things that mm-hmm. I thought about. And it's not that I regret not doing them because I yeah. did. I did very productive other things, but they weren't necessarily what I pined for. And uh, I would tell my younger self, like, don't worry about your parents. Don't yeah. do that. <laughs> Just you do wow. you. Yeah. Do and, you. you know, I'm making up for lost time, but it's like you should have done yourself earlier. Yeah. I love and, that. That's smart, though, because a lot of people get caught up and then now they're stuck in this nine to five job and this routine and they can't then once they're done with working, they're just so exhausted to do anything else. And if, and if they're like children that come from, you know, maybe less fortunate parents or parents that worked really hard to mm-hmm. give them that, it's the parents uh, that said, we want you to get this corporate job at Ryan and you're <laughs> slaving away in this town. Yeah. That, but they wanted that for them because they said, we don't want you to work as hard or have this unpredictable, unpredictable income or whatever risk of, you know, uncertainty that they felt no health insurance they're yeah. like we we want something better for our child so we want you to work this corporate job but it's not necessarily what the kid wants yeah and and that's what i see is you know especially as uh immigrants in the chinese community i'm really active in taiwanese and, and chinese stuff a lot of them are first generation immigrants and then mm-hmm. they say we don't want you to own restaurant we don't want you to own this like rental shopping center it's such a headache it's such a hassle i'm like well that's that's because you guys were doing it by the seat of your pants without policies without systems to grow and you didn't have mentors you didn't have people that could advise you so i understand why it was stressful and difficult so they want their kid to become an analyst or become you know a a leasing review agent at so and so and like they think that's so great because it's different from what they had and uh, for a lot of the kids or for my colleagues it's not and mm-hmm. it's it's a really bad problem i think is living up to your, other people's <sighs> expectations oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, Huge. spend too much money and and unhappy and bad relationships yeah and or if you compare yourself to someone else you only see a snippet especially on instagram of their life you're like oh my gosh i have to i have to work this much harder to to have this lifestyle and yeah. really like are you even happy to work that much to try to get to that point I was having a friend, a conversation with a friend. It's like, we shouldn't value our life based on, or we need to stop valuing our life based on how much money we're making. It needs to be, are we living? Are we enjoying our time? Are we happy? Are we balanced? All that stuff. I so love it. That's my Definitely. goal. That, that's my goal from the rest of the year. We're now six months into the year, with six months left. And so I'm going to value my life and job based off of if i'm having a good time there you go there you go that's the only one that yeah. matters yep well you're going to be a good dad and we're a going to really have to do another dad. show to where 
Dad gets to do the playground, and we're gonna have we're gonna have Beth on, and she's yeah. gonna tell us all about Redo. what she does. Yeah. I know. And I know we'll, have, we'll have we'll have a second show. We're we're gonna have to we're gonna have to run because we're just like almost out of time. Thank you so much. Yeah. Seriously, this has been crazy y'all. good, Violet. Thanks for being awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. We're gonna have you back on, and we're just gonna have we're just gonna have a mom show. Yeah. You no, know, because Beth works for Fossil, which is very interesting now. Yeah, I forgot we had the connection. Yes. Oh my gosh. The mural for she, Mona Mee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. They oh painted over that, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. about time. I know. So we're gonna have we're gonna bounce, but we're gonna because we see you guys like every week. It's it's totally awesome. Yes. Sis, this has been awesome. I know. I've had if so much we've fun. had a producer this whole show, I haven't had to mess with anything. It's so great. It's so it's so cool. And so the outro music that you will probably be hearing right about now produced by Brendan Bridwell, which is totally awesome. So, all right, we got to roll. Bye, Papa Sam. Bye, sis. Love you. Love you too. Bye.